Um, you know, game one, they were pulling it out of the net every night, every, every time down the floor. Eric Bledsoe finishes it off there. He had 21. Milwaukee finishes off the game with a 21-point win. So they have yet to lose two straight at home on the entire season. Also plus nine on the boards tonight as the Celtics lose their first game of the postseason. Let's get you to Milwaukee. Brad Stevens at the microphone. Paul Flanner, SP Nation. Brad, where did this, where did this get away from you guys in the third quarter? How did it get away from you? Well, I thought, I thought they dominated a lot of the first half, and we were lucky to be down four. Um, I thought that they owned their space on both ends of the court better than we did. And, um, you know, I thought that our, our reaction to that was to settle um, on offense, and it led to some runouts, and then it just steamrolled on us. But they, they, they were great tonight. They deserved to win. Um, and we need to look at what we can do better. But, you know, we knew that they were going to be really good tonight. We talked about matching their urgency and beating their urgency, but we weren't, we didn't do that. Um, and uh, even in the first half, you could see, like, boy, we were lucky to be where we were, I thought. Kyrie obviously seemed to have some trouble tonight. Um, I know he's not feeling 100%, um, but were you surprised, I guess, with what you saw out of him energy-wise and just kind of what he, the way he played tonight? I have to go back and look at it all. I, I'm more focused on our team as a whole, and, and I just didn't think we as a team were very good. Um, but, uh, again, I want to go back and just credit them. I thought they played great, and they played – Tough, um, physical, got into us up and down the court, played on top of us. Um, no different than what they've been doing all year. Um, but you know, as 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 you know, Bud said the last couple of days, they just wanted to do it harder and better, and they did. Brad, Rob, Fox, Marshall, Brad, Chris Middleton, obviously huge game for Brian Yar. He's been really good against you guys for the series. How tough is it, especially his pull up ability? You know, just to defend that. Um, oh, we have to do it a lot better than we did it. You know, it's tough. He's really good. He's an all-star. You know, he's one of the 12 best players in the East this year um, and has had a good year. And he started that in the playoffs last year against us, I thought. Um, but we have to do a better job on him. We did not do a good enough job on him all the way down the line. And he still might make it, but we have to do, you know, he got too many looks where it was too open. Brett John Corrales, MassLive.com. The, uh, the three-point defense in general, it didn't seem as connected as it was yeah. in game one. There were a lot of undisciplined closeouts and flying out at shooters. What, what led to that? Good question, John. Um, good observation, too. Like, I mean, we weren't very good on, we weren't very good on either end, but I do think that our offensive settling and some of the shots that we forced probably you know, steamrolled on us in a lot of ways. Um, and so hopefully we can be better at getting better shots, getting able to set our defense so we're not scrambling the whole time, and then just doing a better job of really flying around and being into airspace. I thought there were moments where we did it really well and there were moments where we didn't. And some guys, like, I go back, I think Morris has played two great games. Like, he, that's a good example of a guy that I think's really doing it pretty consistently. And, and, you know, I could go through the tape and pick out 10 good ones of each guy and probably some that we need to get better with. Eric named the athletic Brad. That's the most the Bucks have switched in a game for yeah. pretty much the entire season. Did, did you feel like they were connected and able to do it just because a lot of times when teams aren't able to, yeah, I mean, they, they've got the guys that can do that. They did it last year a lot, um, and uh, so that's a that's a that's an easy thing for them to adjust to. Um, and I thought they did a really good job of it. You know, basically Giannis and Smaller were doing that. Um, they even switched Miritich a little bit, switched Ilyasova a little bit, but um, and kept Lopez as a you know protector. And that's where they've been great all year. Um, they have a lot of versatility. They have a lot of defensive versatility. And game one was not going to repeat itself. Um, and so um, they did a good job of, again, owning the space on both ends of the court. They, they, they put us where they wanted to when they were on defense. And when they were on offense, they took us where they wanted to. Uh, Ultra Wisconsin State Journal, you frustrated you a lot uh, on day. What did you do differently uh, against your defense today? Anything? Went downhill. That's what he does. 
I mean, he hits a couple of threes again. What is he, five for eight or nine on the series, I think, shooting threes. But he's, um, but at the end of the day, what he does is he goes downhill, you know, and, and he got to the foul line, um, made a couple of those that he missed the other day. I said it um, this morning. If we could guard him the exact same way for seven straight games, and, you know, he's not going to go seven for 21 very often. He's an MVP, right? So, like, ultimately, Guys like that are going to score some, but we got to do a better job on everybody else. Uh, Kane Pittman with the pick and roll. Uh, Brad, Jason Tatum. He's only got nine points through the first two games. How are you seeing his aggressiveness, I guess, offensive, offensively, and how are you able to get him going? Yeah, so like I said earlier, my focus is on all of us, and we all have to be better. Um, there's some things that each guy can do better, some things that each guy needs to bring to the table. Um, and we need to make sure that we're all clicking when Friday night starts. Thanks. All right, let's get you back to Milwaukee. Mike Budenholzer, the prohibitive favorite for coach of the year at the podium. Uh, you know, obviously, I think that's more what we're uh, accustomed to seeing. I liked our spirit, uh, our activity, our competitiveness, um, all up and down the roster. Obviously, um, you know, Giannis and Chris and Bled really set a tone. And, uh, you know, we just need to kind of capture that, see what we can, uh, you know, take it to Boston with us and play that way um, up there. Yeah, but just what do you think? about your defense in terms of that third quarter? What do you think you guys were able to do to kind of turn the tide on that end? Um, you know, to be honest with you, I thought we were competing and playing well defensively uh, for the whole game. And the third quarter, maybe it's just a little bit of, um, you know, I don't know if you say wearing them down or whatever it is, but we just stuck to what we were doing. Um, our guys were able to create some turnovers, create some misses, you know, take care of the boards, get out and run. Uh, but I thought the defense really for, uh, you know, from, from the beginning was, was quality. Uh, Bledsoe was kind of bottled up in game one and got loose tonight. What, what was the difference that you saw out of him? I just, you know, his aggressiveness, uh, you know, was really good. I thought, you know, obviously he sets the tone for us defensively. Um, you know, it's a, it's a great matchup um, at the point guard spot. And, you know, again, I think just like for our whole team, when we get stops, then he can get out and play and transition. He can play with a little bit more space. Um, and, you know, we were able to get a few more stops tonight. And I think that turned Bled loose and, you know, a couple other situations where he was good in attack mode. Eric, name the athletic, but that's the most we've seen you switch in a game this entire season. Just what do you think defensively of your guys? And I guess how proud of you were they were you that they're able to make that adjustment? Yeah, the guys were good. Um, you know, they they probably run more, uh, you know, small on small pick and rolls that, um, and then you know some of the other situations maybe we read it a little bit more. But our guys they um, they competed, they got after it. You know, they were totally bought in. Um, I was very pleased with their effort defensively. Uh Coach Giannis 18 times to the foul line. And even though he didn't have a basket, I think, in the first quarter, but that's what you wanted to see right from the start. He was really aggressive and getting to the foul line. And then those shots are going to come. Yeah, no, I thought Giannis's mindset and, you know, the aggressiveness with which he played, the force with which he played um, is what he needs to do and what we need to do. Um, and so, you know, he's, he's, uh, he's going to get to the free throw line a lot, the way he attacks, and, you know, he's going to finish or go there, and sometimes both. Coach, do you think that um, the physicality Boston had with Giannis in game one sort of surprised him and he adjusted tonight, or do you just think maybe it was a little bit of rust in the first game compared to today? Well, certainly you have to give Boston credit. Um, they played well the other day, um, and there's no doubt they're a good defensive team. They're well coached. Um, and we didn't play well. So, you know, today we played better. Giannis played better. Collectively, we played better. Um, you know, now it's uh, we'll go to go to Boston and, um, you know, be a great, great, uh, great game Friday. It, it seems like he was catching the ball in different spots than he was in game one. And, and I just noticed the practice yesterday. He spent a lot of time with an individual coach. Can, can you take us through it all? what personal adjustments he may have made or what you guys were working with him on yesterday? 
I have no idea what my assistant coaches do with Giannis, so uh, that's a joke. But uh, you know, in, in all honesty, it's it's a lot of stuff what they've been doing, um, you know, all year, and uh, you know, getting him in different spots is something that we try and do um, throughout the year, and sometimes we're better at it than others. Um, you know, tonight I thought his activity just in general was was good. Um, people finding him, um, him finding his teammates. Uh, you know, so it's you know his individual work on off days and his practice and work ethic are phenomenal. With Giannis, I'm curious. Did you feel like he found maybe a little bit better balance tonight? It looked like he was looking for the pass early and then kind of picking his spots a little bit there. Yeah, you know, I, I think a lot has probably been said. I, I I don't think he was that bad the other day. Um, but you know, was he better today? He certainly was better. I think finding his teammates. I think we shot it better. Um, you know, making shots is such a huge part of the playoffs and uh you know he had guys step up and make some and i think that opens the court for him and uh we got to continue to make shots around him he's got to continue to make great decisions you know, why the switch to nico in the starting lineup and, and what did you think you know of his play and, and some added minutes tonight yeah it's interesting i thought nico was great i thought he added a little bit of a you know an energy and an effort a little physicality his defense is what stood out to me um obviously he's such an incredible shooter and can shoot it from deep and you know you're just waiting for him to pop off five seven eight threes in a game so you know I think to get him in the game more to get that three-point shooting that three-point threat out there um, just made sense Sterling's you know a little banged up a little uh, you know he his back is uh, just a little sore so um, I thought Nico was really good and I thought his effort defensively you know stood out as much as anything just the threat of him at the three-point line is uh, you know, it's really helpful for us. Uh, just with Chris, you uh, said you, bud. You, yeah, you, you spoke uh, pregame that you thought he was one of the guys that played well last game. It seemed in the second quarter he hit a couple of those transition threes, and that really seemed to spark things after that. You were sort of struggling to hit shots before. So, what did you see from Chris offensively? Uh, I thought, you know, Chris, like you said, the, the transition threes, when he's starting to hit those, and we got guys backpedaling and they're trying to show crowds. and. Um, you know, he gets in a rhythm on his dribble coming up. Uh, you know, those are huge shots for us and him. And, um, you know, I thought he scored some other ways. You know, I thought our pace and Bled getting to the paint, Giannis getting the paint, sharing it, getting some really good open threes uh, for Chris with, you know, just our activity, our aggressiveness. Um, so he made some tough ones and he made some, you know, I think that his teammates created some really good looks for him also. Just taking a look at the bench, I think George and Pat, uh, again, were, were guys that ate up a lot of minutes. It's just uh, how, how, I guess, convenient is it for you to have George where you just have so much trust in him and he can go out there and play like that? Yeah, I mean, it's it's uh, it's hard to articulate, you know, what George Hill means, I think, to the team. And particularly for me, just to have, you know, a point guard in Eric Bledsoe who starts the game, who's a phenomenal defender. And, um, and then to, you know, come in and have George kind of, then give Bled a break, and there's really no drop off defensively. And you know, George has played in a ton of huge games, a lot of playoff series. Um, you know, he's just uh, he gives me a ton of comfort. I think he gives his teammates and everybody a lot of comfort for sure. Coach John Corrales, MassLive.com. Uh, how much of an impact was Boston's misses on your three point shooting? Meaning getting out in transition versus game one where they hit a lot more shots and you were going up against a set defense. Yeah, no doubt. You know, it's sometimes it's a make miss league and, you know, we'll have to look at the film. Hopefully we were, um, you know, making it difficult on them at the three point line and contesting and, but it's just like every game. You know, I guarantee you they miss some open looks that, you know, they make those. It's a little different for us in transition. And, um, you know, just you look at the film from game one. We wish we would have made some more shots and made some more threes. And um, so we'll look at the film and see. Uh, hopefully it was our defense that, you know, impacted their three-point shooting. And uh, we just got to continue to scramble and rotate like we did. I think, you know, that was a big part of, uh, you know, our defense tonight. Great. Thanks. Um, I think that they uh, they just took took control of the game. Um, uh, really did a good job of getting out and um, uh, get, getting some really good looks in transition. And uh, um, you know we we didn't do a good enough job there getting back and getting matched. And uh, you know they just they just took over and and post their will. After uh, 
I felt we were good for a good amount of time, but I just think that, you know, they uh, they play with a lot of purpose. And, um, and uh, you know, I think we were we were good at uh, for most of the times, but uh, it was just that run in the third that really, really got to, to our group, um, and, and we couldn't recover from that. Did they do anything more to create another time? I mean, you just... Uh, yeah, um, you know we need to definitely be better with that. He uh, uh, really got going early and just kept it going. And uh, <clears throat> you know, obviously, we, we, you know we'll have to look at film and see what we can do better. Uh, but you got to give them credit; they responded. Just talked about matching their sense of urgency. Do you feel that that was lacking in this one? I mean, I felt like we were playing, you know, we were playing at a good, at a high level. You just got to give them credit, you know, that they played better than us tonight. Um, I think we, we have to look at the film. You know, I think that sometimes you look at things one way and then you look at film. All right, back live now in Milwaukee. Kyrie Irving, 4 of 18, his third worst shooting night in a playoff game. Kyrie, uh, Gary Washer from the Boston Globe. It seemed like you just couldn't get going tonight. Even in the second half, you hit a couple of shots, and then, I mean, you were getting contested at the rim, couldn't finish. What what, what happened tonight? Um, you know, like I said the other the other the other night. I mean, some shots gonna go in, some shots aren't. Um, tried to get to my spots, but they were really sending three over everything every single. Uh, place I went on the court, um, you know, that's a sign of respect. And for me, I just got to be more efficient in controlling the tempo of the game, pace, uh, where I want to get to on the floor and making reads uh, better uh, around that uh, mid-range area. Did a great job of switching tonight, you know, forcing me left. And, um, you know, getting to the paint wasn't wasn't hard. It's just going in there and making the right decisions. Um, and the way I started off the game as well, of just getting downhill, um, you know, just setting an example for my teammates of the way we want to play. I just didn't put my stamp on that. So I think that the rest of the tempo of the game, they did a great job of controlling it. And then when you have, you know, them shooting, you know, 47 threes and making 20 of them, um, you know, that also kind of bites you in the butt. And then, uh, you know, you got E. Bled and uh, Chris Milton and Giannis combining for, you know, over 70 points. Um, you know, that's tough to, to um, combat as well, especially when you're not making shots. Joseph Provone, WEEI.com, <clears throat> CLNS Media. Kyrie, what did you see differently defensively in the second half from the Bucks? It wasn't anything, uh, you know, different than we saw in the first half. I, I just think that they were, you know, they were just scrambling. It was just like, looked like frantic defense, and then we got a little frantic and, um, you know, took some quick shots, um, you know, that led out to some transition, ba uh, transition baskets. Uh, so we, we we gave them some you know pretty easy plays, but they they made the right reads as well. And then, like I said, I mean when you attempt 47 threes, it's like that's absurd in an NBA game. But that's the way they've played all season. So we just got to um, be ready to weather the storm um, and get ready for Game Three. Kyrie John Corrales, MassLive.com. You just kind of touched on it. Do you think the the um, your team's misses kind of played into their ability to take and make as many threes as they did versus? The game one facing much more of a set uh, set defense. Yeah, uh, but I think we could have controlled a little bit more in a half court in terms of the threes that they were getting. Um, you know, Chris shot seven for ten tonight. Um, Eric uh, got three for five, and then Giannis made two for four. Those are big plays in the game. And then of course, when Giannis shoots eighteen free throws in a game, that also um, you know slows the pace down. Um, and you know, we just got to find a way to to keep our tempo. Um, you know, that's my job to go out there and just really. Uh, set that example for our team, um, get out in transition, make the right reads. Uh, so we'll look at film, but I think I already have a, a clue of the way I want to play going into game three. Jay King, The Athletic. Kyrie, this is the first time you're in the playoffs as a lone all-star on your team, especially after a game like this. What is the extra burden there, and how do you intend to deal with it? There's no extra burden. Um, you know, I, This is what I signed up for. This is what Boston traded for me for. So... Um, being able to go back, get back in the trenches, um, get ready for, you know, another battle on Friday. Um, you know, this is what you live for. So, you know, basketball is fun when it comes, when you have to, when it comes like this, when you have to respond. And, uh, you know, this is, uh, you know, the type of basketball you want to be playing at this time of year.
Uh, Kane Pittman with the pick and roll. Uh, Kyrie, you said that they were throwing two or three bodies at you every time. They looked like they were switching one through four to start the game as well defensively. So how do you guys work through that and, and what's the best way, I suppose, to get around that? Because it looked like, as you said, they were playing pretty frantic defense and sort of harassing you guys. Yeah, um, as they should. They have came out with a sense of urgency. I don't think any team wants to go down 2-0, especially on their home floor. So they came out with that energy. I feel like we paced the game pretty well. Um, but like I said, it, it starts with the example of me getting down in that in that paint and making the right reads. Um, and I failed to do that tonight. So, you know, that, that, that responsibility falls on me um, in terms of that just controlling the tempo a lot better. They, they were getting out of transition. They made plays. Um, but there were times, and, excuse me, examples in the game where, um, you know, we I could have just slowed us down and just got us into some – some uh, sets that we, we've gone to and attack the switches, um, especially when Chris and Nikola Mirotic are switching on me. That's something like, I just got to get, just go by them, so. Final question, Paul. Uh, Paul Flannery, SP Nation. Things can fluctuate a lot game to game in, during a playoff series, but how do you guys feel about coming out of here with a split in the, in the big picture? I mean, it's the, it's the playoffs. We're playing against a great team. You know, they're number one in the Eastern Conference for a reason. Threw up, finished regular season strong, came out, did what they were supposed to do in the first round of playoffs, and now, um, you know, it's two great teams going against one another. I've been in too many battles, um, you know, going back and forth to get it too high or too low. Um, you know, going back home, you always feel good, but, um, you know, this one would have been great to get, um, but we didn't. And uh, now we go back home and reset our uh, – reset our mindset going in and, and really just have fun playing the game of basketball. They did a great job of just making us make decisions and being in certain positions where we didn't execute or guys were thinking that one guy was going to be there and they weren't because they were sending three or four at the ball. And um, in order to beat this team, you got to play even more um, together. And especially when we're coming down and we have the talent to attack certain matchups, but getting that ball to the second side and getting it back on one another side and attacking that way and seeing the help, then everyone's in the in the right positions. So uh, we shot a little too quick tonight, especially some of the shots I took. So, um, you know, game three, I'm looking forward to it. Yep. <clears throat> Big night to be a Milwaukee Bucks fan and enjoy the fruits of these three. Giannis, this is uh, Joe Varden from The Athletic. Uh, Coach Bud just said that it wasn't as though you played bad in, in game one. And I, I know you talked about it yesterday. Uh, your brother called, I think. Um, other than that, how did you shake off whatever you thought about game one and, and just get ready and right for this one? You know, usually, you know, after the shaky game and the, the bad loss at home, uh, you know, you get a little bit test up. And uh, start hesitating and stuff, uh, but you know, all I can do is just trust my teammate and um, you know, go back and look, look at the tape and see what I did wrong, what I did right, and just come into the uh, with the uh, game to the mindset to be aggressive and uh, make the right play. John Corrales, MassLive.com. Chris, uh, how much of an impact? Did it have on your uh, shooting, the three-point shooting, getting out in transition versus in game one facing more of a set defense? I mean, uh, I think that was one of our main things is playing with pace. Um, they're a great defensive team once they get set and we play in the half court. So for the main thing is for us to just get out try to get a stop and get out and run, play with pace and um, attack out of that, make quick decisions. And I was able to find open threes and pull up threes with that. Eric, Mike Heller, 97.3 The Game in Milwaukee. About getting to the rim, they, they took that away on Sunday. Conscious effort, what was different on being able to get to the basket tonight? Uh, like Chris said, they're a great defensive team. Um, they packed the paint on, uh, in on us. And I thought game one, we had some good looks we just missed. But, you know, today I thought we kept attacking. No matter if they packed the paint or not, it made the right decision, decision. And, you know, trust each other, you know, to make the right play. And we did that. Eric named the athletic Giannis. It looked like early in the game you were really trying to make a conscious effort to find your teammates when they're out by the three point line. Was, was that something? I know we talked a little bit about patience yesterday, but it, was that kind of part of your approach going into this one? Yeah, um, I think in uh, game one I didn't do uh, you know a good job finding my teammates. Uh, I think I could do a better job. So you know, of course I wouldn't be aggressive, but at the end of the day you gotta make the right play and. Uh, to start the game, the right play was the pass. So I was just trying to, you know, find guys, um, you know, in the right spot and just make the right play. 
Chris Doyle, Wisconsin State Journal. Uh, Eric and Chris, you guys were a combined 10 of 15 from beyond the arc. How does it help your game when Giannis is being more aggressive and able to kind of find his spots? Uh, it works hand in, works hand in hand. I mean, um, he's at his best when he's he's playing aggressive, getting downhill, um, getting to the paint, putting the pressure on the defense. And in order for us to loosen up for that, we have to be willing to take and, and make um, shots, threes, play aggressive. So it works hand in hand. We both have to be aggressive. We both have to, you know, try to score and to help things out for him. Man Velasquez, Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. Uh, there's a lot more switching from you guys on defense instead of dropping against the pick and rolls. Just how much do you think that energized you guys, allowing you to kind of lean into your aggressiveness? Um, I mean, they uh, as much as they're great on defense, they're great on offense, man. They like to get downhill. Um, same as us, make the right play. Um, in game one, we got beat, you know, uh, you know, one on one, uh, screen the roll, uh, hold for popping, you know, getting wide open looks. And when we look back, when we look, went and looked back at the fan, we, we just thought that was the right thing. You know, Coach Bud did a great job. You know, his staff did a great job of, you know, making you new know, adjustments. And in the playoffs, you got to make adjustments. And that's one of the big adjustments we made. Γιάννη Καλησπέρα, Γιάννη Κοσδούσκας, Nova Sports, Greece. Ε, μαζί μου από την Ελλάδα ήρθαν 20 μαθητές σε μια ενέργεια που εσύ στηρίζει για την ανακύκλωση, την τοποθετική ανακύκλωση ε, και φεύγουν με ένα τεράστιο χαμόγελο στις βαλίτσες τους. Πώς νιώθεις εσύ, πώς βλέπεις αυτή την αγάπη που υπάρχει από τους Έλληνες και όχι μόνο. Α, ελληνικά ή αγγλικά. Ελληνικά. Α, εντάξει, είναι, είναι πάρα πολύ ωραίο το συνέστημα να α, έρχεται ο κόσμο στο γήπεδο και να μας στηρίζει. Um, ειδικά αυτό που έχουμε κάνει την ανακύκλωση και μας, με έχει βοηθήσει ο ατζέντης μου και φέραμε τα παιδιά, 20 παιδιά που το αξίζουν να είναι εδώ. Uh, είναι, είναι ωραίο που κερδίσαμε το μάτς και θα φύγουμε ένα χαμόγελο. Uh, όπως είπα, uh, θέλω να σας ευχαριστήσω όλους τους Έλληνες που έρχονται εδώ. Είναι, είναι τρομερό να έρχομαι στα παιχνίδια και να ακούω uh, Έλληνε να φωνάζουν και να σηκώνουν την ελληνική σημαία και α, να συνεχίζουν να το κάνουν αυτό. Γιατί αυτό είναι που με α, συνεχίζει και μου δίνει δύναμη και συνεχίζω και προχωράω μπροστά και κάνω ό,τι καλύτερο μπορώ. Χριστίνα, Μάγνερ με το Μιλουάκι Μαγαζίν. Χρυσ ή κάποιοι από εσά. How does a game like this, especially in light of the game one result, play into the continuing maturation of this team? It's just one game. I mean, um, that's the thing we told us, told ourselves um, after game one. Um, they punched in their mouths. They won by 20 plus or whatever. Um, but at the end of the day, we only lost one game. So um, here, it was the same situation. No matter the points, we, we won one game. Um, so we have to move on to the next one and prepare for that. Um, it's going to be tough to, to win on the road in the playoffs, but we've been there before um, with Detroit series, and I think we know what to do. So just got to go in there, give it our all, um, be sharp, be, pay attention to the game plan, and try to get a win. Yeah, that's Chuck Freeman from the fan. Was there an urgency that you had to come out and win this game? You didn't want to go down 0-2 going into Boston. That there, there was that extra hump that your backs were kind of to the wall, even though you were only down 1-0 going in. You know, of course, uh, there was an urgency, and uh, as Chris said, you know, last game one, uh, the points don't matter. But at the end of the day, you know, you got to come out and you know win game two. You know, you get back on track, and uh, that's what we did tonight. That's what, how we've been inspiring all season long. Um, that's what great is. That's what's great about this team, and uh, you know we gotta talk about the fans too. You know I think the fans did a great job, just you know supporting us, giving us that extra motivation, and uh, you know the atmosphere was great. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know we gotta still stay humble. Uh, we know we got game three on the road now. We know every game is going to get tougher and tougher and tougher, and we gotta keep playing good basketball and um, trust one another, and hopefully we can get game three. Giannis Wayne in the back here, Stephen Watson with WISN TV. Giannis, I'm curious what uh, Thanasis had to say to you after that game. Thanasis? Uh, I haven't talked with Thanasis yet, uh, but uh, he'd be he'd be probably proud. I played a little bit of defense tonight, so he'd be probably proud. How you like? <laughs>
Giannis, another one I, I was told as a team you guys went to go see Avengers last week, and I'm curious what you thought of it and also just um, what that's like for you with just all the different things you have to deal with to be able to kind of take a night and hang out with the guys away from, away from the floor like that. You know, it was great. Um, you know, most of the guys from the team came out. Uh, the movie was uh, a really nice movie. I was waiting for that movie to, probably for a year and a half now. Um, it, it's, it was everything that I expected, and uh, I didn't know it was three hours long. We were there for three hours, uh, and I had to use the restroom, but I, I never left. So it was, it was a nice movie. John Corrales, MazLive.com. You guys made your adjustments. You feel good. You got a big win. And now you have the possibility of getting Malcolm Brogdon back going into Boston in one of those two games. What does that do for your confidence knowing that you've had this kind of game and you might get a key player back at some point maybe in Boston? Chris? <laughs> I mean, uh, we are, we are. Uh, I know what Malcolm can do. He's uh, a huge part of our whole season. Um, went down late, but uh, just what he, he brings to the table, his poise, his toughness, um, his ability to knock down tough shots, big shots late in games, to make plays for others, and uh, just another guy out there that, that knows how to play. Um, high IQ guy that can play both sides of the ball, on and off the ball. So um, to get him back, it's going to be huge for us. Um, so hopefully he comes back, he's ready, he's in shape, and he can help us win some ball games. Giannis, uh, I'm, you guys really haven't switched a lot this season, and tonight you just keep switching action over and over again. How does that involve you a, a little bit more? How does that change things for you defensively? Um, you know, obviously, uh, we've been playing. Uh, we've been dropping a lot, uh, making the other team shoot a lot of, uh, you know, tough two. And um, so, you know, when you, when you switch, you know, you got to take uh, the individual pride. You know, you got to guard your player and try to keep him in front. And uh, I think that helped us. I think game one, uh, we were able to um, get a lot of open looks. But now, you know, by switching, you make them play one-on-one. -on -one. And uh, I think I can move my feet. Uh, Nico can move his feet. Ersa can move his feet. Brook can move his feet. So I think uh, that's going to help the team, you know, in the long run. So we work today. Hopefully we can, you know, go back, watch tape. Um, Coach Bart can tell us, you know, what the game plan for Game Three is, but um, for sure we're going to use this a little bit more, you know, moving forward in the series. Paul Flannery, SB Nation. Eric, uh, with Kyrie, you can try to force him to take bad shots, but he makes a lot of bad shots, uh, tough shots, I should say. What was your what was your strategy on him tonight? I know you picked up full court a little bit more. What was your strategy on him just to just to try to make it hard on him? Well, like you said, try to make it tough, man. He's great. <laughs> Phenomenal one on one player. Um, all I could do is try to, you know, uh, take him out his weaknesses, weaknesses, run him off the three point line, you know, and trust my teammates going to be behind me. So they do a great job all season long, Brooke, uh, Giannis, of having my back if I get beat. And we just made it tough on him. Uh, Chris, Steve Ashburn with NBA.com. Uh, both coaches made it sound as if your team was in control even in the first half, though it really revealed itself in, in the second half. Did you guys feel that's, that way as well? Or was there some sense of maybe it could be frustrating if you're playing well, but you're not getting the results quite the way they showed later? Um, I mean, I, I think we felt we put ourselves in a better position to win um, in that first half uh, and then coming out the third quarter. Um, you know, we were down to maybe game one, and we knew we just weren't putting in the right effort when we're doing the right things out there. But um, this game, I will say, we were a little bit more confident going to halftime. We knew what we need to do in the third quarter. Um, we knew that's where the game really slipped away from us in game one. So we wanted to come out as strong as we could and try to play the same way we did in that first half.